What's up guys, my name is Potato and this is the 8th of 9 guides that I'll be putting out to help you find all the Dragon Priest masks. Now before I continue, this guide will contain spoilers. So it's a little bit further in the game and it's directly off the main storyline. So just be aware of that. Alright, so we're going to go stab Nakreen in the butt. You get this quest right after the Fallen, where you travel to Whiterun to call down Odofing. I didn't bother getting the footage for this battle since it was very straightforward. Just lure him in and trap him. Right before letting him go, make sure you tell your companion to wait here or let them go free. I lost mine the first time I did this because I didn't tell him to wait and lost a bunch of stuff. They just sort of disappear. Hop on your new dragon buddy and try to resist singing Reading Rainbow. Okay, fuck it. Butterfly and... So Oda Ving brings you to Skulda Finn. These, these names are ridiculous. This place is insane though. You'll be greeted with a dragon attack almost immediately, and there's Draugr watching that bridge right in front of you, and right past that is a Death Lord, all within this first little area. Then on your way towards the second archway, there's another Death Lord and a Draugr Scourge. When you set foot into that wide open area, you'll be met with another dragon. Fun, right? Yeah, yeah, no, we're, yeah, of course, we're having fun. In this area, there's going to be two towers, the north and south tower. There's one at the very end of this little open area, and the other one is across the other side of the map. These contain random treasures, but are also guarded by a couple of Draugr inside. My curiosity has always made me go in and check them, but I've never found anything worth mentioning inside them, so I just ignore them now. The courtyard, well, it's not really a courtyard, but I'm going to call it a courtyard, is being patrolled by a ton of Death Lords and various Draugr. Handle this the way you want. By this point in the game, you should be pretty decked out in gear, so you shouldn't have that many problems. There's also a chest on your right as you make your way up into this area. I usually take out all the enemies before heading on over to it. Once you're done playing with the undead, go on inside. Skuldafen Temple is definitely not a complicated place. There are three puzzle rooms, and each is not horribly difficult to figure out. The first puzzle room you come across has three rotating pillars in the center, a switch, and of course is guarded by a bunch of sleeping Draugr and coffins. After taking them out, you'll notice that there are pictures of animals above the outer pillars. These need to match. Now the center pillar depicts on which gate to open. If you look against the back wall, you'll see two more pictures up on the wall. A snake on the left and a bird on the right. To advance, we need to open the left gate, but if you want to get access to a quick chest, open the right one. The next little room looks like a room they did sacrifices in, and at first glance only a single Draugr is in it. Well, you're wrong. The coffin to your immediate right will open up, and the center coffin down below will open up to a Death Lord. Check next to the stairs for a quick chest, and head on out into the spider den. Should be pretty easy for you to cruise on through here, since spiders are not that big of a threat. Right after the spiders, you'll come to your second puzzle room, which a Death Lord and his buddy are patrolling. There are three rotating pillars again, and pictures in their respective places. The side ones are above themselves, while the center one is behind it, along with the hidden chest. Told you these weren't that hard, right? Now we're inside the actual temple itself. First room you come in contact with will have a couple of Draugr and Death Lord watching over it. Simple enough, so just walk upstairs and go towards the spiral staircase at the end of the hall. Right before the staircase though, there is a pressure plate that will release the lantern above onto the oil in front of you. So if you're afraid of fire, be careful here. Once up top, there will be a room that has two Draugr watching through the windows and a door in the center. If you're a sneaky fella, you can go right up to the door, open it, and shoot the lantern that's in there. This will usually take care of all of them, including the one that emerges through the coffin. Or at the very least, it'll leave them seriously wounded. Once they're dead, go inside for a chest and the lever that opens up the gate. This long hallway will be drenched in oil and pressure plates to release the lanterns. Same old tricks, different room. Watch your step or get rid of the oil first. Around the corner there will be a Death Overlord guarding the Nordic puzzle door. You have plenty of room to fight in here, so get the jump on him as quickly as possible. Or if you left the oil in from earlier, you can use that towards your advantage. On his body, he'll have the Diamond Claw. Convenient, yes? This is the last puzzle in the temple. You'll be home free of enemies for the rest of the temple, so feel free to take a break here after grabbing another amazing word for Storm Call. Now if you follow my guides, this should be your third word for it and it is quite devastating when used outdoors. Alright, so we finally made it to the final battle. When you leave the temple, you'll be put outside on the upper bit of Skuldafin. There'll be a couple of Death Lords hanging around here, so before you go up, make sure to take them out. 
Once they're taken out, make sure to save your game because you'll be fighting two higher end dragons and Nakreen at the same time. Now Nakreen favors frost damage, so bringing some protection towards that is going to help you a lot here. If you're quick and sneaky about it, you can actually pull off what I did and rush up on him before he retrieves his staff and take him out in one arrow without ever alerting any of the sleeping dragons. This simplifies the fight enormously since now all you have to worry about is just a frost dragon and an elder dragon, at least in my case. These dragons will vary depending on your level. The pillars on the outside edges provide fantastic cover against these fellas. One dragon will always land in the center while the other one lands down below. My advice is to try to take out the weaker one first so you can concentrate on the big boy. If you take too long, the lower one will actually fly around and land on the pillars on the side and shoot you from behind your cover, like what the frost dragon just did to me. That's a bad thing, so make sure he regrets it. Now that our dragon problem is solved, let's go check out Nakreen's mask, huh? Nakreen's mask gives the wearer plus 50 magicka, and destruction and restoration spells cost 20% less. Pretty awesome if I do say so myself. I'm not a magic wielder, but I can see where this can be beneficial. However, this mask will negate the alteration perk and mage armor since it is considered armor. I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you liked it, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future Skyrim videos. For those who like the more direct approach, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. Both of those links are in the description, so go check them out. Why aren't we friends yet? And remember to come check out the next video to see how to obtain the secret ninth mass now that we have all the other eight. Thanks again for watching another Skyrim Insider.